Yeah, this ain't gonna stop. Feels smooth. Kind of see on there. Yo, what's up, internet? Kern1776 coming at you with a product test, demonstration, overview, whatever you want to call it, Vidya. And you've never seen a Vidya like this before on my channels. You've never seen it on my personal channel, the Kern1776 channel. You've never seen it on the BattleBot channel. And it is the Fisher Space Pen. So this was in my mailbox the other day. They sent it to me. Hey man, check this out. Give us any feedback or whatever. So it's, it's a tried and true tested product. I don't think my feedback is gonna really matter, but I've never messed with one of these. So we're fixing to do it right here on the video. Me and you. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna test it out. See if it does what they say it does in my own little sci redneck science way, I guess. <laughs> and if you own a Fisher Space Pen, let me know down in the comments and tell me why you like it or dislike it. But anyway, we're gonna change the camera angle. We're gonna check this thing out. See what they sent. All right, so the Fisher Space Pen comes in this really cool packaging right here. It's got some information on the back. So 1945, Paul Fisher and Associates using their devotion to accuracy, integrity, and fairness to improve the ballpoint pen. So this pen has been used by NASA. It's what's called the space pen. Uh, so they, they use this in space, so it works in zero gravity. Of course, like, uh, unless we get a ticket, you know, to get on Elon Musk's deal or whatever and go up in space, I mean, we probably will never be able to test it, you know, in a zero gravity situation, right? I don't see myself doing that anytime soon. I don't know about you guys, but anyway, bust this guy open. Got this really cool plastic case. It's got an astronaut on the front. So I guess the real wow factor is in the technology that's in the cartridge that's inside this pen right here. Um, so they use this cartridge or the design of the cartridge in, in all their, their pens or whatever. So they got regular looking pens the whole nine, but this is the bullet pen. It's a small, compact, lightweight, just weighs a few grams. A pen that a lot of EDC people like. Divers use their pens because they can write underwater. Military, uh, Navy SEALs, people such as that use these. Astronauts, obviously. But really cool pen right here. There was a note that they sent to me telling me about it. So this is actually a Cerakote finish. It's called their Tungsten Cerakote finish. So Cerakote is very, very durable. They have many finishes like powder coated ones, translucent ones. They've got chrome plated ones. You know, they got tons of different stuff, but now they're offering the Cerakote, which is really cool and very durable. A lot of uh, personal protective manufacturers out there going to Cerakote on their items just because of the durability and the potential of color options, obviously. So you can order or purchase this with a clip that, that snaps onto here so that you have a clip if you wanna put it in like a front pocket or something like that. This one doesn't have the clip. Very cool pen. You take the cap off, put it on the other side and it's pretty much close to the normal size of a pen. It feels really good in the hand. And then the real magic's in their cartridge. So here's their cartridge, number PR4 black, medium refill, Fisher Space Pen, Boulder City, Nevada, USA, 100% USA made, FYI. And it's gas filled, I think it's nitrogen. I'm not 100% sure, but it's a pressurized cartridge. It's one reason why it can write in zero gravity, shelf life of 100 years, I think I've read something like a million miles of, you know, you could draw a solid line for a million miles or some crap like that. <laughs> so, very uh, efficient little pen right here. And what's cool too in the packaging, like the kind of looks like a moon or whatever. It's got little craters or whatever. So if you want to display it, you can do that. And then on the inside, it gives you a little bit more education on the whole design, the whole process. Hermetically sealed, it's got a gas plug. 18 months of rigorous testing by NASA, 1967. Minus 30 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, so you don't have to worry about it freezing or, or melting. Although 250 degrees, you're probably gonna melt and not be able to use your pen. 
but otherwise underwater upside down zero gravity any angle here's the different colors so if you wanted to order a different color cartridge to put in there you can't really cool they, they got a really cool history and they're proud of it which i dig really cool edc pen but the question is outside of the cool factor how well does it work right so i'm gonna do a little test because i've never owned anything like this like i just use stuff like this i mean this is just a freaking giveaway pen from the iga down the road from the house that we buy groceries from <laughs> right so i'm going to compare it to just a typical pen right there here's another pen i actually spent a pretty i spent i probably could have bought two or three space pens for what i spent for this i bought this pen at a office supply store tool t-u-l i think really nice pen it writes well all that stuff man but this, this thing was expensive like i was like i want a nice pen and i bought this should I have bought some of these? We're fixing to find out. I've got, you know, a typical survival pen right here. This isn't anything crazy or special. It's from Atomic Bear Rebel. It's a nice pen, don't get me wrong. But um, ballpoint, you got a glass break there. Use it as a cubiton if need be. Doesn't say anything other than Atomic Bear spring. And then just a typical you know, pen that you buy a bag full of, right? I got some post-it notes that there's like they're rugged post-it notes that you can write, you know, wet or whatever. And then I've got a right in the rain, you know, notepad right here. So I got a reservoir here. It's a glass little dish right here out of my wife's kitchen that she's probably not too happy that I've got out here. Maybe she won't watch the video. I got some grease right here because we're going to we'll put some grease on this paper to see if it'll write through grease. Why not? Obviously, we'll fill this full of water. This is my favorite grease, by the way, if you're into uh, personal protective equipment. Modern Spartan Systems has awesome lubricants and things like that, USA made. This is their Spartan Accuracy Grease that I use on my... Uh, personal protective equipment. This stuff's really, really good. We'll spread some of that on a piece of paper, see if these can write in it. So, first test is, let's just see how well it writes. And this pad right here, your typical bag of pens. Everybody's used one of those, you know the deal. The survival pen. A little bit smoother, a little bit nicer than this one. And I know this part's boring, but got to do it in case people ask. The expensive pen that I bought from an office supply store. Very expensive pen. 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 Pan. Writes pretty good, but honestly, doesn't seem any better than that. <laughs> and then we've got the Fisher Space Pen. really like the way that feels it kind of feels like and i don't know if it's the texture of this paper huh it feels about the same this is a little bit rougher it almost feels like a pencil it's got a little bit of resistance but i like it feels good in the hand so they all write okay all four of them will put ink to paper so, will they put ink to paper when they're wet? So first we're gonna try just the basic run of the mill, buy a bag of pens, pen right here, see if it can write in the water. It started, just keep going, see if it stops. Yeah, it's not doing too good. It is writing though. The ink's kind of lifting off the paper a little bit. See how it does in this one. Okay, it's writing underwater, but it's sporadic after it gets good and wet. I mean, it did okay, but it's sporadic, not clean all the way around, right? Let's try my very expensive pen that I bought. Oh, this is horrible. I don't know if you can see, but the ink is literally coming up off the paper. I think this is horrible. 
like the ink's coming off the paper or whatever did come down. Like if I move it around, it's like I didn't even write on it. Practically disappeared. Okay, so that's a fail. I wasted my money. <laughs> All right, the survival pen. And I mean, are you gonna be riding underwater? Probably not, but what if it's raining? What if, you know, you had to go through a creek or a river, or you fell out of a boat or whatever, and you gotta write something down and all your papers are wet or your pen got wet, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, this one sucks, this one ain't doing nothing. It's not lifting off the paper, but it didn't, didn't write worth a crap. Just regular old buy a pen, put your company name on it, give it to customers as a freebie deal. All right, this is doing what the what the expensive one did. It's just lifting off the paper. It's writing a little bit, but if I move it around, it just lifts it off the paper pretty much. So that's a fail. So this one actually did something, right? Just didn't do a great job of it. The rest, not so much. The Fisher Space Pan. Yep. Works. Feels smooth. The ink's not lifting. I'm not missing anything. It's doing really well. It works. What about just regular old notebook paper? Drop that down in there. Does it right? Yes, it does. Not a problem at all. It is wiping a little bit. I mean, it's wet ink, so it's not lifting. And it's not missing anything. So it's, you know, just tore the paper because it's just crappy, just regular paper. That's cool. So it actually works underwater. Really cool. So let us see what it'll do with some grease. I'm just going to smear it. Let's try the cheap pen. Eh, not too good. Let's see if it'll start to write again. Yeah. Let's try the survival pen. No. It's just moving the grease. All right. That didn't work. Uh-oh. There we go. My expensive office supply pen. Same thing. It wrote a little bit, but mostly just moved the grease around. My IGA pen. Nope. Just moved the grease around. The space pen. Let's we'll see if it'll write on grease. Why not? I know how to spell. Did a little better. I don't think I spelled grease right. Sue me. But it's on there. It's doing better than the others. So I guess that wins that test. It wasn't perfect, but it did write on grease. That's how you spell grease, by the way. So, it rode underwater, no problem. It rode on grease, it writes well, feels good in the hand. 
Will it ride upside down? Will these ride upside down? I'm gonna lay down beside the camera. Got my pins right here. I'm just gonna hold it right it here. Look like you have an app named Pandora. You can search for it in the app store. Cause I don't use Pandora. I like Spotify. All right, so upside down. First pin, just a regular old bag of pins that you can buy pretty much anywhere, All right? Upside down. Negative. Oh. If I... Yeah, not so good. Just a few lines. The survival pin. Atomic Bear survival pin. Will it ride upside down? Okay, it's riding. I'm just going to keep going to see if it stops. Uh oh. It's stopping. Oh, it's back. Oh, it stopped. Oh, it's back. Okay. So I guess it's fair to say it'll start riding upside down, but it won't continue riding upside down. So if you're on your back, if you're flying in space on your back, or you're just on your back, you need to write, it'll do it for a time, and then it'll stop eventually. So yeah, it'll do it upside down, but you might have to shake it, you know, turn it, turn it over to get the ink back on the ball over time. So I wouldn't say that uh, was a fail necessarily. But you do have to shake it or move it around to recharge the ball. All right. My expensive pen. See how it does upside down. This is a gel pen, I know. And the, the ink in the space pen, I believe, is a, a form of a gel pen. We'll look at the, uh, the paper that was with it to confirm that. But it's writing upside down. Or drawing circles upside down. Let's see if it stops. Alright, this is this is doing this is doing pretty good upside down. I'll do one more page just to confirm. I'm starting to get a freaking crick in my neck. All right, I'm going to crick in my neck. I'm going to say this one passes the upside down test. So here's just a cheap IGA pen. Upside down. Oh, that didn't last long. Give it a shake. Ooh, even the shake didn't work. Oh, my neck. Now, the Fisher Space Pen Bullet Pen Upside Down Test. Writing upside down is tough. I have bad penmanship to start with, let alone being upside down. So obviously, this ought to like never run out because it's a pressurized uh, cartridge in there. Won't we'll get really fast with it. I didn't do that with some of the others. Yeah, this ain't gonna stop. I'm going pretty fast with it. Yeah, it passes. I'm just curious. Which, uh, which was the other one that did good? My expensive one. I'm gonna go fast with this one. Oh, she's getting... Okay. It don't pass the fast test. The bag of pins. It doesn't pass the fast test. IGA didn't work anyway. The uh, survival pin. Uh-oh. 
doesn't pass the fast test. Back to the Fisher space pin. Passes the fast test. Okay. My neck hurts. I'm gonna get up. Oh. So that's my quick and dirty little test of the Fisher space pin or the bullet space pin right here. I think it's cool. I'm glad I have one now. Although I've been in the outdoor community for years, I've never owned a product or this exact product. I've never held one in my hand before until today. I've heard stories. I know about it. Um, I'm sure you have too. You may even own one of these or multiples of these because it is a very popular item. Very popular in the EDC community. Most pocket dumps or most channels and pages that you, you may follow on like Instagram and YouTube. For instance, one of my favorite channels to watch is Best Damn EDC. Um, they, he's had multiples of these on, on his channel. It's a cool item, but I've just personally never had one. And and to be honest with you, like I'm, I'm really not that guy. Like I dig blades and stuff like that, obviously, um, and, and stuff, but I'm not really one to buy the the higher end, like cool EDC pocket dumps type stuff. I love to look at it. I love to watch other people talk about it and stuff like that. It's just, it's just not my gig. Maybe it will be one day because I do think the stuff is cool. Um, but I get my I get my my thrills on watching that stuff, like on Best Damn EDC channel um, and other channels that do a lot of EDC stuff, which is awesome. Go check, especially go check that dude out. Him, Cutlery Lover. Two of my favorite channels for just overall like EDC, great videos. I kind of dig it. I think it's great. It, it passed everything it said it would as far as I know how to test outside of anti-gravity or zero gravity situations, which I can't do. But rode underwater with no problem whatsoever. Obviously white, it writes dry. Um, blew my expensive pen that I bought out of the water. I'm pretty sure I could have bought two or three of these for what I paid for that expensive pen. And this is compact, small, you can get a clip for it if you want. Really cool EDC item, so if you're into EDC and stuff like that, and you're into pens, you probably need a Fisher Space Pen in your collection. But again, first time I've ever used one, first time I've ever had one of my own, and I'm glad I have it. It's really cool, I'm gonna add it to my EDC. It writes well, it feels good in the hand, the balance is good, it doesn't feel cheap, it, it, it's got a little bit of weight up forward for writing. I dig it, and I mean, I'm not a pen guy, I don't know. Maybe down in the comment section below, if you're a pen guy and you can shed some light on it, that would be cool, but um, I dig it, you know. 100 year shelf life, writes underwater, if it gets wet, writes on the grease. Um, pretty freaking cool. So especially if you've got a right in the rain uh, type notepad in your arsenal, if you will, it's probably a good idea to have a Fisher Space Pen because then no matter what, you know, you can write whether this is wet, whether your pen got wet, whether this is greasy, freezing cold outside or so hot that you're not gonna survive to be able to write anyway. <laughs> Really cool, I dig the packaging. I dig the story behind Fisher Space Pen. It's kind of that old school innovation so the astronauts would have a way, uh, whether you believe they landed on the moon or not. July 20th, 1969, that's for you to decide. But by God, they can write in space if they have to, yeehaw. So you can write anywhere that you wanna write if you need to. So really cool item from Fisher Space Pen. Actually really pumped that I, I have one now. So let me know what you think about the Fisher Space Pen down in the comments. If you own any, if you collect them, if you're a pen collector anyway, if you're into the EDC community, you know, what you use it for, what you have, what other kind of pens that they have that you recommend that I have, because I am kind of intrigued. I'm, I may start collecting these things. I don't know. I collect all sorts of other stuff. Might as well add pens to the, uh, to the mix. Just don't tell my wife. As always, I love you. I mean it. I appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to like, comment down below, hit the bell icon, hit the subscribe icon so that you know when I'm posting more videos. I'll see you next time with another product test, overview, whatever you want to call it. Peace out, Coach Scouts. Get you a Fisher Space Pen. Kind of freaking cool. And it works.